so this is Nam Dark Mind number four. Uh, we're at the end of October right now, and this these fruits are not gonna ripen until April May. Uh, but most of us probably will probably be eating it green. So Nam Dark Mind number four, I would say, is not a beginner's mango. It has several issues, and, and the, one of the main one of the two main issues is that it tends to bloom. It tends to bloom quite often so it blooms two to three times a year which is fine for a large tree uh, but if you just recently got like a grafted tree or anything like that it's pretty much detrimental and it, you probably gonna end up that tree's probably gonna end up dying because it bloomed too many times and when I'm talking about blooming several times I'm not talking about like a failed first bloom there's clearly different seasons of the bloom uh, early spring uh, beginning of summer and then towards uh, uh, and then fall so this fall bloom happens it, it occurs for me it occurs every other year so <clears throat> last year there was no fall bloom but this year there's a uh, fall bloom and it, that tends to be the frequency at least in my area for it so there's quite a few fruitlets um, on it the other bad habit of Mount Dark Mine number four is that they are very powdery mildew prone so <clears throat> i did spray these these uh, blooms twice and in, at least in fall that seems to prevent it if this was in spring no matter how many times i spray it it just will not hold any fruit uh, it's just very prone to powdery mildew and the leaves are prone to it like almost year round so because of those two flaws <clears throat> i wouldn't recommend non duck mine more for for anyone who's growing a grafted plant. So if you have a mature tree to graft this onto, I would recommend it if you're interested in off-season fruits. So there's more fruitlets. They are set. I mean, just, here's some older ones right here. So, here's two healthy ones and two not so healthy ones. Uh, I still did get some powdery mildew, as you can see some of the blooms have it, but at least the majority of made it through the powdery mildew with the spraying I gave it. So even just a bit of this, even if I get 20% that kind of holds up, uh, I'm hoping that it still probably be like maybe close to 100 fruits. There's a lot more fruitlets right there. It's all the branches on top, as you could see. I'm actually using a stair to climb up to kind of get this, these shots right now. So there's a bunch of fruits right there. Some more blooms, fruits on top, fruits here. And now I'm duck mine before tends to bloom in quite large clusters, kind of like this. You can see it, this one's, and this one's a bad one, but they tend to bloom in these clusters. So, good thing is these all look like healthy fruits. So, we'll be expecting quite a bit of green mangoes available uh, throughout winter. So, and let me talk a little bit about the, the rootstock itself. So this is uh, Mount Dark Mine number four on our top of rootstock. So this tree has uh, gone through several top wood projects. It's currently at um, probably my third top working project that I have done on this tree. So let's look at the stump. So this is a tassel. Back when it was about, I guess about four foot right here, I actually topped work it with a variety that was supposedly a carabao. I'm not sure if it is, but that's what it was supposed to be. Unfortunately, that carabao, you could see it's right here. This is the where that graph took place. It was very vigorous, but the blooms themselves, they never 
held any fruits. They were very, very prone to powdery mildew, even more prone than the non duck mai. They never really held any nubbins, so I would say in the over the 15 years that I had, I had this, I did keep a branch of it. Um, this variety, whether it was cowbell or not, probably only had two season of good crops. And by two season, season of good crops, I mean uh, they had like maybe two, three dozen fruits. Okay, so that was the first major top work. Well, first major top that I did on this rootstock it was about right here. Then at about, I would say about six foot, I added the I decided to get rid of that, that variety and I added the uh, the Nam Dak Mai number four. <clears throat> so you can see that right here. This was Nam Dak Mai number four. Uh, there used to be several limbs of it. Um, it's, it's not there anymore. Uh, this is the last limb left. Oh, and we're keeping it just because of the ability to give off season fruits. So, yep, this was like the, the the second time I did a major top work on it. And then I think you guys have been seeing my videos on it. Um, now it's in its third stage of the top work where I have added, you know, over a dozen varieties so far to it. So that might be a bit more than what you guys wanted to know about this tree. Um, but that's just the history and detail on this rootstock. And here's the Nam Dak Mai for bootlets. And it's going to be a good crop, a uh, good off season crop. Uh, I might keep a few just to let them ripen just to uh, kind of show you guys how it looks like once we get to April, May for the ripened fruit. But uh, I would say the majority of this is going to be consumed green. And, and Nam Dak Mai number four is a very sour green mango. Some people consider it to be even too sour uh, as a mango, but it's a very, very, uh, has a very nice texture, very crispy texture. Uh, extremely crispy. Uh, it's probably the most crispy of any mangoes I ever had. Okay, so I mean even these, this right here, these two are ready to be picked. And you guys seen that cluster I had right there? It's the largest one, but there's several more. It's kind of hidden between the, the canopy. Okay, so this is an update on Nam Dak Mai number four, just a bit more detail on the variety. Again, I would say it's not a beginner's mango. I wouldn't recommend it for anyone growing a grafted small tree of Nam Dak Mai. But if you do have an old mature tree, uh, I would recommend it if you want some off-seasonal fruits or you know, anything like that. But they, it has to be probably grafted onto a much more mature tree so it could handle those those multiple bloom uh, bloom sets that it does every year. Okay. Thanks for tuning in, everybody.